So what a lot of people don't realize is before I became a professional walleye fisherman, I actually love fishing for northern pike, and especially big pike. Well, one of the guys who fishes the tournament trail with me, Trent Einickner, and his buddy Ben Gilbertson, they invited me up to Rainy Lake. But we got a kind of unique opportunity here in that it's early May, and typically Minnesota fishing is not open yet. But because Rainy Lake is a boundary lake between the United States and Canada, it's actually open to northern pike fishing. So it's earlier than you can typically go for pike. And what's really interesting is is that they're catching these fish with jerk baits. So as the old saying goes, you know, a fisherman is a jerk on one end of the line waiting for a jerk on the other end. We're going to add a jerk in the middle and show you the next bite. <laughs> When the last of the ice finally retreats from many of the lakes, anglers begin to put away their ice fishing gear, but leave their boats in storage awaiting walleye opening weekend. However, the frigid, tannic water of Rainy Lake that borders Minnesota and Canada is the exact place those boats should be instead of stuck in the garage. Like something bit him in the yeah. tail. <laughs> I guess <laughs> we want to catch the one that was biting him. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. If this is bait, we want the one that's biting him. Rainy Lake is a border water, and so the season for northern pike never closes. And its shallow, weed-lined bays provide ample opportunity to catch giant, hungry pike. Apparently somebody had them for lunch here a little while ago. Which, of course, isn't such great news for the not-so-big pike. I sure like to have the fish that tried to eat that fish for lunch. <laughs> Well, and even nice he's got one. some marks on him. Does he? I want to catch the, the one that's going after one this size. <laughs> no doubt. Yeah. In the spring, the pike run into these cricks spawn either under the ice or right after the ice melts. When they're done, they move back into these shallow bays in the warm water to eat. First thing they begin eating is actually smaller pike. They're cannibalistic and that's what's in there for food. And as the other species of fish move in to spawn, whether it's walleyes, suckers, perch, and shiners, they'll gorge themselves on those before they move back into the main basins of the lake for the summer. The areas that we're targeting these fish for the most part are shallow, weedier bays, anywhere from that two to six foot range. What I really like is when I get a good wind push into the back end of the bay. It's taking all that warmer water and blowing it across the top of the water into the back end of that bay. Another place that we're finding these fish is kind of where the wind will funnel down in between some rock. That has a little bit harder bottom content there and in that harder bottom content sometimes we're finding these clumps of cabbage and again those fish are still relating to the weeds but that's what we're mainly where we're finding these fish. Big or not? Big or not? I think he's decent. <laughs> yeah he's big. Decent? <laughs> Looking a lot bigger. I'll get the net for you. Decent's a good. Staying down. Well, he kind of ran towards the boat, and so he didn't, he didn't feel as big. The last last decent one I caught was small, and he, uh, he called me decent, will you? Getting around the back side there. Yep. Oh, but I got to go around the boat here. Well, if you're going, I'm going. <laughs> there he is. Come here. You ready? <laughs> yeah, that's, oh. decent. <laughs> that's a lot better than I thought it was. It's awesome. <laughs> I see what bait you used here. Well, that's that cutter, but that's the, the fatter one, right? Not yeah, the, the skinny cutter? Yeah, that's the fat cutter. And you called it just decent. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's decent. <laughs> <laughs> nice fish. Yeah. I mean, really, a nice clean fish. Yep. It's got I mean, she's post spawn, but she's right. obviously started to eat already. Yeah. Pretty well. <laughs> Great big head on this fish too. Yeah, huge it's head. Kind of a skinny body, but a big head on. I it. don't even think the body's. I think the body's kind of normal. Just post spawn. But the, the head is so big. Right. <laughs> Nice fish, Trent. Very good job. Go ahead and get that one back in over there. What a nice fish. 
That's a great fish, Trent. Oh, big head. The next bite is brought to you by Mercury Marine. Go boldly, tracker boats, fish the finest. Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. Berkeley, catch more fish. And Motor Guide, accuracy matters. Closed captioning for the next bite is provided by PowerPole, the ultimate in shallow water anchors. As you probably know, pike have a lot of teeth and they're a lot of really sharp teeth. So when you're fishing for pike, you have to use a leader. I use a fluorocarbon leader and the reason I use a fluorocarbon leader is these are light. And the reason I want a lightweight leader is when we're twitching the baits, I want the bait to sit horizontal. If you use a heavy leader, like a steel leader, or if you have a big clip on your leader, the bait's gonna sit like this when you stop. You want it to sit horizontal. So let me show you quickly what I use here. I pre-make these up with my swivel and the first sleeve already in place. and then. I have my sleeve on the other end. So I attach this directly to the bait. And the reason I go directly to the bait is to keep that as light as possible because strong clips aren't light and light clips aren't strong. So I slide that in there, slide it down. Then I just go ahead and give it a crimp and this thing's gonna be ready to fish. Keith, Ben, and Trent are actually using a bass jerk bait, but they are also fishing them a bit differently. The action they are imparting is a short, quick stroke, 12 to 18 inches making the lure kick out side to side. After three to four strokes, they go into a long pause, what may even seem painfully long, but that pause is proving instrumental in triggering Isak's Lucius to bite. I got a drag puller. <laughs> you need the net? I, I haven't seen it, but it's sure feeling like it. <laughs> All right, we'll grab it. <laughs> yeah, you just sitting here holding on. I mean, I'm just standing here. I'm not moving, he's not moving. Get an anchor here so we don't drift in too far. Pretty good one. Now here he comes around this way. Oh, he's getting over to this other side here. I'm gonna bring him around to you, Trent. You ready? Okay. Yep. There he is. He's kind of giving up now, Trent. You ready? Yep. I'm ready. gonna slide him. Get him, Trent! Get him. him! Yeah! He is a lot bigger than I thought! Yeah, he is. Look at the width on this thing! Wow! <laughs> <laughs> that's a pretty good one, eh, Ben? Yeah, that's what we're here for, right there. <laughs> that thing has been eating, and he ate one too many things today. <laughs> yes, he did. That's that cutter. I don't even know what color they call that, but it's a... Sexy shad, I think it is. Ooh, I like it. <laughs> well, now we got him in the net good. We got him in the hooks good, but he's in the right place. Yeah, I mean, in that tanneky water, you just, I don't know, I, I didn't think he was that big. Right. But I knew he was kind of a wider one. But he's got length and width on this one. Yeah, just go, go ahead and see if you can't pop that out. There, there we go. go. Look at that bait there. Starting to get a little character to that bait. I like it. And this boy added plenty of character. Look at this thing. <laughs> wow. That's a thick fish. Yeah, not only has it got the length, but just the, that's what we all saw out there. I mean, it was like just wide. This is a great rainy lake fish. I mean, you're going to come up here and catch lots of fish, but then all of a sudden you just smack and you find these monsters up here. Very, very nice. I like it. <laughs> Real-time fishing information from all the pros in one place at walleyechatter.com. You know, as a professional angler, I spend a lot of time on the water trolling, and there's really two lines I rely on 90% of the time. One would be Fireline and one would be Trilene XT. Some of the key characteristics of Fireline when I'm contour trolling or whether I'm trolling around structure or even weeds or wood is that number one, it's got a thin diameter. What does thin diameter do? It allows me to get baits a little bit deeper than I could with like, let's say a Trilene XT. The other key thing is non-stretch. 
Well, that allows me to read baits and see what that bait's doing at all times. Or let's say I'm trolling in current. That thin diameter allows me to get baits down deep. And so those are some of the key characteristics of Fireline and why we use it so much. For all my other trolling needs, I rely on Trilene XT. Trilene XT is probably my go-to when I'm open water trolling or flatline trolling, or maybe even pulling spinners. I can use it when I'm pulling boards, things like that. It's good and tough, very abrasion resistant, but the other thing it has is that little bit of stretch when I'm fishing big fish. That little bit of give gives me the confidence that I'm gonna get those fish to the boat. And the other cool factor about Trilene XT is that it's very affordable. It allows me to keep fresh line on my spools at all times. You know, these two lines are so popular that there's an app out there called Precision Trolling. Precision Trolling really makes my job a lot easier. They have over 300 crankbaits and the dive curves of what those baits actually dive. What lines do they use? Trilene XT and Fireline. That gives me the confidence as a professional angler that I know when I'm on the water, I can tell where my baits are gonna be. The water is cold, the pike are hot, the action is fast, but the presentation is slow. It's late winter or it's early spring. I tell you what, in this wind now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press the anchor and it's gonna swing this boat around, so just be aware of that. If opposites attract, this rainy lake jerkbait bite is a classic manifestation of it. What do you think about that, Trent? She's a little bit slender, but you know, it's typical after the spawn here that she's got a little bit, she's been beat there during the spawn. As Keith Cavias, Ben Gilbertson, and Trent Eineichner target the shorelines or protruding pencil reeds of shallow bays from about a cast's length away for northern pike. That's him fatty. Yeah, he is. Look at him. Like he's been eating all day and had to eat one more thing. <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> So while we're idling out of this uh, shallow bay here, I want to talk about the equipment we're using to catch these pike on jerk baits. The first thing I want to look at is the rod. You'll want to use a medium action rod. You're going to want some stiffness so that when you're popping that bait, that rod doesn't take up all of that pop, but you don't want to go too heavy. When you get one of these big fish on, you're going to lose those fish because you just won't have enough absorption in that rod to take up those big runs. And the reason you're going to have to take up the runs with the rod is because we use a no stretch line. This no stretch line is also important for imparting the right action on the bait. When you're popping it, your rod tip to go right through the line and right to the bait and make it react, make it jump to the side, make it hop, that's what's triggering those fish. The other thing that no stretch line is going to give you, it's going to give you better casting distance. So no stretch line to your leader. Now your leader is going to be very, very thick uh, fluorocarbon. You go with the fluorocarbon because it's lightweight and it allows this bait to have better action. The bait we're going to use is a jerk style bait. These are baits that are designed for bass fishing. This is a little cutter bait, a brand new one. Now the nice thing about the cutter is it takes very little action to make it move side to side. Again, that's what's triggering the fish. As far as colors, I guess we're kind of matching what they're eating. What they're eating is, you know, a lot of times small pike. A little bit later here you can look at using a, maybe a perch style when the perch start moving in. So getting that bait to react the correct way, jumping back and forth, is done by a no stretch line and a medium action rod, and that jumping around triggers a lot of pike. There's a better one. I mean, he, he just stopped it. I mean, I thought I set into a cement brick. You want the net? You want me to get the net? Definitely want the net. <laughs> I'm gonna quick put this in anchor. All right, Trent, I'm gonna just kind of guide him back to you here. He's kind of, all right. I think he's kind of done. There we go. There we got him. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Just in time you got him in the net. <laughs> That's a nice fish on the old uh, cutter there. Let's see if we can get him out of the net here. Yeah. That's the reason we invited you up here is to catch these fish. I appreciate that. Oh, you know what? Somebody else had him. Look at here, Trent. Oh, wow. Somebody else actually had him. Yeah, they did. I guess we know who's the better angler. Yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like it's kind of down in him. We'll try and yeah. cut it off, but he's obviously doing all right. I mean, he he had a ton of power. I can see why he breaks somebody off, because yeah. he wanted to get after her. That's a, that's a great, healthy fish there. Yeah, but I just pitched it right, there's those little pencil -y reeds kind of sticking up, and I okay. pitched it right off the end of it, and it just ooh, stopped it nice. right now. That's a good thing, get yeah, it stopped. Is. All right, <laughs> why don't you just grab a, a something, we got to cut it with something, and we'll 
Just, I think just cut it off as close as you can down in there. Is that a steel leader or what? Yeah, it's a steel leader and a big single hook. Yeah, that way it's just it's just a hook. They say that you just leave that hook in there that they'll dissolve or kind of right. rust or, or whatever out of there from the acid and the fish. So hopefully he'll be all right because, boy, he was sure a good fighter. He's had that hook in him a while, so that shouldn't bother him too much. He's got some more. There he goes. <laughs> The next bite is brought to you by Mercury Marine. Go boldly. Tracker boats, fish the finest. Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. Berkeley, catch more fish. Mustad, stay sharper, longer. Lawrence, find, navigate, dominate. Motor Guide, accuracy matters. Strike King, legacy of domination for 50 years. And Power Pole, swift, silent, secure. Topics, leading information and tackle and techniques to make you a better angler. Presented by Mercury. One of the first things that Ben told me pretty early on in this trip is, you know, don't fish too fast. A lot of people you would think with pike and how aggressive they might be that you would want to kind of move through areas real quickly trying to pick off the most active fish. But the problem is, is that we're using a technique that you just literally got to slow down. This jerk bait fishing, you got to give that bait a chance to kind of walk back and forth. You got to give it a chance to pause and hold completely still. And if you're moving too fast, it just doesn't work. It's The boat is actually starts dragging your lure. When I'm actually fishing along the places that we're trying to target the pike, I'm trying to stay about a cast off of those places whether that's the shoreline or say the pencil reeds that come out into a shallow bay. So what I'm using is the XI-5 heading lock function to do that. And heading lock is real easy to do. Simply point the head of your trolling motor the way you want to go, hit this upper left button, and it will maintain that course. So the nice thing is, is I can adjust it and then go and make a full cast, get back my bait, look up, readjust it, and it's real, real simple and the boat keeps going the way that I want it to go. Now, if we catch a fish or maybe we see a big fish or a swirl or something, the best thing you can do there is simply stop and work out the area a little bit. So I use two different things to do that. The first one is anchor lock, again, right on this key fob. Even if I'm in heading lock and I'm moving along, I just simply hit anchor, it stops heading lock, it anchors me right there, we can work out that area. In the case where I've got a, like a tailwind pushing me a little bit, what I like to use instead there is the power pole because then I can slide that down and again it will hold our boat right into position. We can work out that area, see if there's more fish and get whatever active ones are there. So go a little bit slower than you might think, you know, maintain that position about a cast off the target and if you do start to see some activity, by all means anchor up or put down that power pole, stay on them fish and catch more than pike. In addition to sometimes cannibalizing each other, there are other types of large bait starting to be present for these rainy lake early spring pike to eat. This is what these big fish are feeding on back here. Not only are they predating on themselves, but this warmer water that's blowing to the back end of these bays has everything pushed up in there. Speaking of cannibalizing, well, that's exactly what Keith is struggling with in his own special way. So once again on this trip, I find myself being an interpreter again. I'm uh, fishing with a guy named Trent ein Eichner. Good German name. Obviously in German they say it ein Eichner, right? So the translation obviously is ein, everybody most people know in German is one. So one, one is the first part of it. What a lot of people don't know though is Neinecker is actually Pike Slayer. So it's the number one Pike Slayer in all the world. <laughs> Trent's last name might not be the easiest to pronounce. However, it might not also be too easy at first to see why Keith would wear his sunglasses fishing on a cloudy day. So you might wonder why, why wear sunglasses on such a cloudy, dreary day out here. Well, actually up here, the water is tannicky enough. It's actually hard to see down into the water. But what I find when I put on my sunglasses, I can actually see like underwater weeds. If there's some underwater rock or wood down there, I can see that. But most importantly, if I actually see a fish flashing at my bait, which I can see with sunglasses on, I just take and I stop and I just pop, try and pop it in one place and that seems to be triggering fish. So even though it's not sunny, sunglasses might be your friend. Oh, there's a tick bite. Nope, good fish, good fish. What you got there, Ben? 
I don't know. Feels really good. good one? Yeah. Oh, there he goes. Oh, look at that swirl. No, no. Big fish. And where's he going, man? Where's he going? Uh, I don't know. Can Down the chute. <laughs> I saw that swirl. That was impressive. <laughs> Which way are you going here? Uh, wherever he wants me to go. <laughs> oh that my thing. goodness. That is a big fish. Are you going to back around or what? This fish is doing exactly what it wants right now. <laughs> so we're going to go back to the other side, huh? <laughs> yeah. Got it as loose. I think he was afraid of the boat there. <laughs> he didn't like the net either. No, he didn't like that at all. All right, this time we're going to get him. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Look, she Whoa. gave us the old spin in the net here, but we'll just quick get her out of there. I think we can just grab her. Look at this fish that you caught, man. <laughs> Look at this rainy lake monster there. That is quite a fish. And this is what you come up to Rainy Lake for. I'm so glad you guys invited me up. I mean, we have caught literally a ton of fish. Oh, a lot yeah. of small ones, but every once in a while, right mixed in with them, yeah. out comes these monsters. And the cool part is, is that jerkbait deal. Yeah, most definitely. Awesome pattern. Well, I can feel its heart beating right through its skin, so I think it's ready to get back in the water. Back man, man, is that a great fish. <laughs> that is so nice. All right, Jim, let me get right over here. That is a great, great fish there. My goodness. And I think she's going to be all right here. We'll see if we can get her pointed out here a little bit. <laughs> what a fish and what a trip. <laughs> all day, can I be singing the song Rainy Days and Mondays? Sure. Rainy Days and Mondays. Oh. Now we're just kind of. <laughs> 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 and the key in. I don't move on camera, I just stand there and twitch my eyes to the left and to the right. <laughs> Doesn't that annoy you a little right there? Doesn't that annoy you just a little bit? Huh? We're fishing back to back off, off opposite sides. Is that like opposite spooning? Yeah, butt to butt. <laughs> the next bite would like to thank Ben Gilbertson and Trent I. Neitner of Rainy Days Guide Service. For more information on Rainy Days Guiding Services or to book a trip, visit www.rainydaysoutdoors.com.